Welcome back to another episode of Inward News. It's your boy, Dre. Apparently, Miami is doing one thing right in this pandemic out of all the things that Florida has done. They have COVID sniffing dogs, and apparently they are detecting the virus at a 99% accuracy. It's a little weird because it's Florida, and they have not followed any protocols for the entire pandemic. So everybody could just probably have it, be asymptomatic, and just not know. Hell, Florida is so weird. They probably built an immunity to the virus. Uh, yeah. So these dogs could just be running up on little anybody and just be getting lucky every time. But uh, let's try them out in a safer city. Let's see if they got that same accuracy. Because Lord have mercy. The booster shot, they came out and they said, we don't need a booster shot at this time unless you're old or at-risk personnel or at-risk person. So no more shots if you already got two. So if you're happy, be happy. If you're not, be not. I don't, I don't know or care. Uh, speaking of Florida, two teenage boys with an apparent history in violence were arrested for planning a mass shooting at their school. These kids were looking up guns on the black market, building pipe bombs, and even researched the Columbine. Uh, they spoke with the mother, and she said, I didn't know they were serious. Whether you think somebody is serious or not, Looking up how to kill a bunch of kids at any age should be a red flag. Even if they were children. No, you report that. Uh, further research on the boys shown that the police had to respond to their homes a combined 80 times over the past couple of years. So it's two kids. I think maybe 12, 13, 13, 14, somewhere around that age. Two kids. 80 times the police have to be called on their homes. And I don't know if it's because of the kids or the parents, but there's an issue of cops have to come over 80 times. And this, this is assuming it's a 40-40 split. If one kid had more calls than the other, either way, that's a problem. 80 times for two children? Over the years, meaning this was before they were teenagers. Also, one of the boys' Instagram was filled with weapons and like alt-right flags and whatnot. The proof is right there, guys. <laughs> Hi, I'm Hamilton, and I'm here to let you guys know you need to get all your favorite snacks ready for the pilot episode premiere of Detective Meow on September 18th. Smurfs' first cartoon to premiere because I found them. I just can't push out product as fast as these other companies, but I found them. I'm the first person to put them in a cartoon. But this is the first company to get their cartoon out. Uh, came out Saturday. It's called Detective Meow. It's a foreign cartoon, but it's uh, there's a company that dubs their uh, stuff in English, like foreign cartoons in English. And Smurf got the role of Hamilton. Uh, so go watch it with your kids and be tell uh, be sure to tell Smurf how he did. I think it's called Saturday Morning uh, underscore TV. Saturday Morning Cartoons underscore. If you go to Smurf's uh, Instagram, it'll be there. So shout out to Smurf. Shout out to getting out there. Shout out to first getting your first uh, big credit. Shout out to my dog. Or my Smurf. Or my pig. Because of his character. Hamilton. A South Carolina lawyer was arrested because he tried to cash out a $10 million life insurance policy uh, to his son. The issue is, he tried to cash out by hiring a hitman to kill him. He was willing to die to give his kid $10 million. So he didn't hire somebody to kill his son. He hired somebody to kill him so his son could get $10 million. So I don't know what he was avoiding. I don't know what his son was involved in. But if you're willing to die to give your son $10 million, hey, I don't want no parts of that. So it was probably in some shady stuff or his son was in some shady stuff. But that life insurance policy had to go to his son somehow. Uh, <laughs> I, I don't know. And while everyone was distracted by the stupid outfits that were shown off at the Met Gala, apparently Black Lives Matter protests were uh, getting snatched up outside. Uh, but apparently one of the organizers was outside yelling about how the rich uh, were in there partying after paying a $30,000 price ticket to get in instead of using that money to pay for tickets. And she has a valid point. If you can get 100, 200 people to pay $30,000, 
to dress up to basically a big con, a big uh, dress convention, y'all can do something else. And not saying rich people don't deserve to spend the money how they want to spend it because, you know, I get it, they earned it, cool. But if you can spend like $5 million for one day of dressing up, come on, guys. Something else. Or at least don't make it such a public event that rich people are like, this was just a rich event that happened and people knew about, cool. But making it like this big hullabaloo on the media, thats I think that's what pisses people off, like the flaunting of the money. Uh, Tone and Maul, they dropped Flair. They dropped that last week. That's finally out. Uh, so go check that out. Uh, I can't remember how long it is, but I think it was five songs. So yeah, go check out Flair. Shout out to Tony Mall. They always putting in work. Uh, we got some other local artists today. Gumbosa, uh, he just dropped his album, Black People Can't Swim. 12 songs of what appears to be Gumbosa's personal thoughts. And it's so much so that he actually has a song titled Personal Thoughts. Uh, I've said it before, I'm not a music guy. I don't really listen to lyrics. I just like the way things sound. So don't ever ask me to review your music because my opinion means nothing. Uh, but I love his beat selection. Uh, basically the horns. I don't know what it is about horns, but I like hearing horns and he has horns. So check out Gumbosa, check out uh, Black People Can Swim. Uh, Check it out. I think he's on Bandcamp, YouTube, Spotify. I think he's in a lot of places. If you're an R&B soul person, then another local artist, Rhea706, dropped her album. It's only seven songs, but she says it's the best 21 minutes you'll spend. Uh, from what I've heard on the previews that uh, Apple Music allowed me to preview, it's a very smooth album. Uh, it's, it for sure sounds like one of those albums where you can play it on Sunday morning and your kids know what they're in for. Uh, she's like, she's singing. It's real calm, smooth, just, you know, listen to it, feel the vibes. But yeah, like I said, I'm not a music person. I, like, I listen to R&B because I like listening to the songs, like the, the beats. So I listen to beats. I rarely listen to lyrics. I can't remember lyrics. So her music sounds good, uh, at least to me. It sounds good to many people. Gumbosa and Rhea are both in a lot of... Uh, festivals and musical events that go on in Columbus. So they have a following. So if you're one of those people like, oh, nobody else is listening to them, I can't listen to them. Other people are listening to them. They perform in Columbus all the time. The Battle of the Bands, talent shows, uh, music festivals. I think uh, Rhea was just at a Tech Tech Cella, the Columbus Tech Festival. I think Amosa was in it too. Uh, but yeah, check them out. They make music. Producers hit them up. Other artists collaborate with them. The women, assaulted by former Olympic coach uh, Larry Nasser, took the stand in his. Uh, they took the stand in his case, uh, and they they shut shit down. Uh, these women came out explaining the abuse they received from this man, but also how leadership and the government failed them. Uh, they speak of how their stories were either dismissed or they were pressured into taking deals, like. It's bad all around, but to think that the government, because I think the FBI was in charge of investigating this, and to think that these women are held up at such an early age to represent our country, and when they're blatantly explaining their abuse, they're being dismissed. Like, if that's not, if that's not a euphemism for how America treats its people, then I don't know what euphemism means. Like, uh, hopefully this guy gets locked up behind bars and we never see him again. And hopefully these women receive their healing. And hopefully this gives an insight to all the people that was talking crap about uh, Simone Biles stepping down from performing this Olympics when, like, stuff like this is going on. Like, she's in the air. You think that's good for her to be in the air, not focused? Hell no. Have you seen how high she gets? How many twists she's doing? That's dangerous. But yeah, hopefully these girls get healing and get peace from uh, their abuse. And hopefully this guy gets locked up forever. And now on to the y'all hiring segment. Claw Athletics is a sports and recreation company that is ran by uh, personal trainer, Coach Corey Lawson. He helps the everyday person become the athlete they know they are inside. And uh, 
If you're in Austin, Texas, to attend his boot camps or in-person trainings, he also offers ebooks and virtual training. He's also a certified nutrition coach, so if you just want diet plans, uh, you need help eating right, you want good food tips, hit him up. He can help you out with that. Uh, there are a lot of people that work out just fine. They just don't eat right, and that's why they aren't seeing results. So he can help you out. And there are people who eat amazing, and they just don't know how to work out. He does both sides. He can help you out on both ends. Uh, so check him out, either Claw Athletics or Coach Corey Lawson. Enology or Anology uh, is a swimsuit brand that gives you both swimsuits and mesh covers so you don't have to be half naked the whole time. Uh, these covers are sexy enough to be worn without the swimsuit. Uh, like, and I don't, I don't mean that in a don't wear swimsuit. Under it. I mean, you could. That's up to you, not anybody's opinion. Uh, but what I'm saying is they look like dresses. They just look like see-through dresses. So if you wear it like just casually out to the club or something, you wouldn't look crazy. It looks good either way. Uh, they're all handmade and they go from sizes extra small to a double extra large. So fit for all sizes, uh, for most sizes, not to say all, fit for most sizes. So check them out. They got all kinds of cool colors. They got like the bright neon colors, but they also got like the nudes and the browns and the dark colors. So uh, check them out. Kiamel Natural Products or Kiamel Natural Products is uh, making history as the first black woman-owned business accepted by the National Eczema Association. Her products for skin health has greatly diminished and for some completely got rid of eczema. Uh, so even the most extreme cases uh, are getting relief from removal. This product also works for those suffering from psoriasis. So if you have like, you know, what people call alligator skin, the scaly stuff, like it really helps. And, you know, before and after pictures, every, results may vary. Like, we're not going to say it's guaranteed to work for you. Things are different for everybody. But uh, I say check them out. For the National Eczema Association to accept them, you got to at least prove it. So check them out. Get your skin right. You know, oil up. Get your gator skin. Get your elbows right. Get your knees done. You know, check them out. Give them a chance. Do that. And uh, Kayo Impressions or KO Impressions. I want to ask these people how to pronounce their businesses, but I also like surprising them because a lot of them don't know that they're going to be on here. Uh, but yeah, I, I got to start doing that. Uh, Kayo Impressions is a candle and wax melt business. They put their candles in tiny looking jars with like little lantern handles. Uh, I don't think you can hold them because if you set it on fire or if you light the candle, it's going to burn your hand. But it looks cool because they're like gold. Uh, she even makes rose water, which I didn't know was rose petals boiled in water. Uh, I thought rose water was just like a fancy name. I didn't realize that it was just a literal name. That is rose water. I should have known after I found out what rice water was. But yeah, she does rose water. Uh, and apparently she does it fresh to the ordering. And she does like these cool vase looking things like the, the bulb. And then it's like... A big fancy jar uh so yeah get you some rose water uh check out these businesses if you know any other black businesses let me know uh so i can toss them in next week uh that's been another episode of inward news bye